Hello, we're back again talking about the, talking about binomial distributions. This time we're looking going to look at some real life examples. And here we go. First of all, side effects from medication. So if you are interested in becoming a nurse or a doctor, or you know someone that is, you might be interested in this one. So we're going to model the number of patients that experience side effects. Some of us have had side effects, usually, so you might be interested in this. Okay, so we look for the, the parts of the binomial probability. And there's the P. We're going to have a random sample of 100, so that's the N. And what are we interested in? For the first one, we're interested in 5. So X will be probably somewhere, I'm going to make this for approximate, somewhere around 5. So what does this look like? Remember my suggestion? could have zero people with side effects. One, two, three, four, five, six. And anywhere up to 100, because that's how many are in our sample. Now it says x greater than 5. So, the list we're interested in is 6 to 100. That means that since the probability of all of those is a 1, we're going to have to subtract the part we don't need. And since there are 6 of those, you don't really want to add up 6 different probabilities. So we'll use our binomial CDF, and we'll tell it there are 100 patients. The probability is 0 0.05 not here. And we want we want it to subtract out all the way up through five patients with side effects. See if this is what you get. Uh, that's how you would work it. How about the next one? The next one should be a little bit similar. Notice it's all still greater than 10. So we'll have 0, 1, 2, 3, 10 is one of our interesting numbers. 9 is before it, 11 is after it, and it goes up to a possible 100. Greater than 10 means it would be 11 to 100. This is going to look familiar because we want the bottom one ones cut out. So we'll take one minus because that's the total of all of them. Binomial CDF. Hundred patients. 0.05 for a probability. And we want to subtract out all of them up to 10 and that should give you the 0.01147 or 3 and greater than 15 this should look familiar you might actually if you're pretty good at this by now you might just bring this back up on the screen this whole thing and change the 10 to a what Ten to fifteen, because you want everything greater than fifteen. So you have to subtract zero through fifteen, and that should give you the zero point zero 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 four, or about four percent of one percent. That that's the chance of more than 15 patients having side effects from this medication. Example number two. 
I'm going to look at one to model the probability that some credit card transactions are fraudulent. So this time we'll pick out the numbers. And there's our probability 0 0.02 50 transactions. That's our N. It's a greater than sign. We're familiar with that. To make our list. Zero through fifty. Oops. Zero to fifty. So we want greater than one. So this can be one minus binomial CDF. We've got 50 transactions, probability of 0, 2, and we want to subtract out everything up through 1, in other words, 0 and 1. So we could have taken PDF, added probability for 1, plus the probability of 2, and subtracted that sum from 1, and that would have given us the result for that one. How about the second one? It's very much the same. 1 minus binomial CDF. 50 transactions a day. Probability of 0.02. We want what's greater than 2. So we want everything up through 2 added up and subtract it from the 1. 3. Can you see the pattern? You get binomial CDF. 50 transactions. Probability of 0.02. And we want to, want to get rid of everything up through 3. And let's see if you got the right numbers. Those are the three results you should have gotten. And next, example number three. We're talking about spam emails. So we're talking about some real life situations here and how we can figure out what the probabilities are or likelihoods. Maybe we'll have to decide how many people we have to put on the case. So here. Here's our probability, 0.04. Here's our n, plus 20. And our numbers of interest. Notice these are equals. So, I know we'll PDF. We've got 20 emails, probability of 0.04. And we want exactly zero. Can you get the second one before I write it down? Pause it if you like. Binomial. PDF because exactly equal to one. 20 emails. Probability of 0 0.04 being spam. And we want exactly one. See if you get that one. And the third one, you can see the pattern. Binomial PDF. Double check. Yep. It's exactly equal, so we're good. 20 emails, probability of 0.04. And we're targeting two spam emails. See if you got it right. Are those the numbers you got? All right. Hold on, it's going to get a little bit dangerous now. Number of river overflows. The park systems are interested in this and they want to make sure that they provide the proper precautions. So let's go. Our probability for this is 0.05. And over, you get an overflow 
during a storm, the 20 storms, that's n equals 20. And what's our target? Well, first of all, we notice it's equals. So that means we're going to use PDF for all three of these. So binomial PDF. We're talking about 20 storms. We're talking about a probability of 0.05. And for the first one, we want a zero there. For the second one, and I think you can take care of this. Uh, that is going to be the same, except we'll need a 1 at the end. In fact, you can, on your calculator, you can go up, paste that back in, change 0 to 1, and get your result. And you can do it again. Binomial CDF, oops, PDF. It's equals, remember, 20.05, 2, and a little bit of a drum roll perhaps. And those are the three answers you should get. And that'll give the parks departments an idea of how many times they'll have to prepare for overloads for a particular year. Next. Shopping returns, a bit of retail talk here. You can use that to model the number of shopping returns you can expect each week. So here we go with the next one. Here's our probability right up front. You can make this 0 0.1 if you like, or just 0.1. We've got N 50 orders. Now this time, we have an inequality, so we have to be careful. So let's take the first one. We'll call it A, just for convenience. Call this A, B, and C. So for A, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and of course we can't get more than 50 returns. Which ones are we interested in? greater than 5. So here's 6 that I forgot to put in. 6 through 50 are the ones we're interested in. The probability of anywhere from 6 through 50. Well, that means I'm going to have to subtract out the 0 through 5. So I have 1 minus binomial CDF. We've got 50 orders. The probability of 0 0.10 for return on any of those orders. And we need to subtract 0, 0 through 5. We want it to stop at 5. Add all those up, subtract that result from 1. Part B. Pretty much the same thing, except we're interested in 10. So we need 10 here, we need the one before it, the one after it, goes up to 50. The ones we're interested in is over 10, so we need 11 through 50. I can see that we're going to have to subtract again. So 1 minus binomial CDF, 50 orders. Probability of 0 0.10, and we want to subtract out up through 10. For part C, this time we're talking about 15, so 15's in here. We'll be interested in 16 possibly, or 14 possibly, and it goes all the way up to 50. I'll go back here and check. We want numbers that are greater than 15, so it would be 16 through 50. And I can see from my picture, I'll take 1, which is all the probabilities put together. I know we'll CDF. 50 orders, probability is 0 0.10, and I want to subtract up through 
15. Well, are you ready? Have you written down your answers? There are the three answers. Did you get this one? Good. This one? Good. And hopefully I'll the third one as well. Well, I hope that worked for you. Notice this gives the store the idea of how many customer service reps they'll need to have in the store each week to handle those returns. Very practical. In one case, if you're part of the park, park service, in this case, if you retail and so on. Real practical applications. Well, that's it for now. See you next time.